It has been a long time. This is a very dirty broom. But you know what? The Blue Jays sweep away the Kansas City Royals, winning 4-1 at Kauffman Stadium. They've now won three straight games, of course. And they're 43 and 67 on the year. Ideally, still not a great record. And with the trade deadline that's happened, holy smokes, we're all we're all exhausted from today. But the Blue Jays come away with the win there in in Houston. It's been a lot of Houston talk today. Uh, Kansas City there today, and my goodness, it didn't start out great early. Bottom of the third inning, you know Gallagher hits a home run, and well, we're down one nothing. You know, okay, things aren't great there. And then things change for the Toronto Blue Jays. Let me talk about one thing. Could have changed the game. All right, run right first. I want to say I want to say no. Uh, nobody out. And I think it was in the, was it the fourth inning? I think it was the fourth where that, uh, I'm going to try and find it here. Bottom four. There it is here. Uh, O'Hearn hits a ball really hard. One hopper to Justin Smoke. He snares it. I don't know how he got it. Gets back up. Rifles at the second. Bobochet back to first. Double play. And it was gorgeous from the Blue Jays. And that gets the double play. Erases that base runner at first. Now there's two out and nobody on. Next batter, Starling, hits a single to right field. Imagine if, you know, O'Hearn's Hearn's ball gets by Justin Smoke and it's a single and the runner moves up to third and then they get another base hit and it's a 2-0 lead. Instead, you give that single and then Lopez flies out, inning over. By the way, on that out from Lopez, Lourdes Gurriel Jr. leaves the game with a right knee injury, so I'm not sure exactly what's happening with him. I'm hoping there's nothing but positive. I hope he's back in the lineup very, very shortly. Because with all the injuries and the trades going on, we can't lose any more players. Alright, so that's just that. But then with, with that play and that double play being made, it settled down everybody. Alright? Because in the in the in the top of the sixth inning, I mean what a job by Kevin Biggio. You're seeing these young guys continue to develop. Bo Bichette has a double to lead off the ball game on the very first pitch. It's like, yeah, why not? It's Bo Bichette. Why not let him ha- do that? Because he's a stud. And the three young guys are unbelievable. You saw you, guys, you saw a grand slam from Vladdy yesterday. You saw a leadoff double there. And then you go to the top of the sixth inning. And Kevin Biggio walks. Then he steals second. And what a stolen base. He must have picked something up on Jacob Junis. And, and he gets a head start. And then gets going. No throw from, from the catcher. Because it wasn't even close. Next, like a couple pitches later... Just a smoke dumps a single in the left field. Biggio comes in to score. Small, smart baseball. A walk, a stolen base, and then an RBI single with two out. And you've got nothing off of Junis from this uh, up until this point. Incredible job by the Blue Jays. An incredible job by Biggio and Justin Smoke to drive in that first run of the ballgame. And then next inning, Freddie Galvis is up. And he's still a Blue Jay. There's, there's a guy over 30 that's still a Blue Jay. I never thought I'd see the day. Actually, is he even 30? Oh, 29. Never mind. I was wrong. <laughs> he's, oh my God. His team is so young. And Freddie Galvis gets a 1-0 pitch. And it was a fastball down. Or sorry, excuse me. It was a slider down. Mid- middle down, though. So Freddie Galvis got barreled the ball. Hit the dead center. And it carried and it carried. And it was gone. A uh, solo shot for Freddie Galvis. Giving the Blue Jays the lead. And they weren't done just yet. Top of the eighth inning on the very first pitch. Bo Bichette. It was a ball up in the zone. All right, it was a slider right at the top of the zone, a hanging slider, and Bo Bichette crushes it to dead center, and it's gone! First home run of this big league career for Bo Bichette, and the Blue Jays tack on another run. It's now a 3-1 lead. Great job there, and then next up, Kevin Bijo, he doubles down the left field line. Next up, Teoscar Hernandez, he doubles down the left field line, and Bijo comes in to score. The youngins are showing it in the game in this series, and the Blue Jays come away with the sweep. Now, let me talk about something. After that double play from Justin Smoke, and then that single that they had in that inning, and then the flyout, which eventually led to a Gurriel injury, that was in the fourth inning. The fourth inning. They did not have a single hit the rest of the way. You saw how big that play is now. The fact that they got out of that inning, the fact that the Blue Jays were able to get on the board in the next, was it the next half inning? I'm not sure. Was it the next half inning or was it a few innings later? 
Uh, no, it was a few innings later. It was, it was, it was the sixth thing the Jays scored the run. But it kept them in a one-run ball game. Then they tied it. Then they took the lead. They kept building the lead. And the pitching was just dynamite the rest of the way. And ideally, I know the Kansas City Royals are one of the worst offenses in the game. But coming into the series, you had the identical records. They lost one game to KC this year. They won three of four at Rogers Center, and then you swept them in KC. The Jays are seven, or sorry, six and one against Kansas City this year. That's awesome. Against the teams you have to beat to be a good team, you got to take care of business. And they did just that there today, and they did that this weekend, or sorry, the, the, over the last three days. Incredible job by the Blue Jays, an incredible job by the young guys doing their thing. Now. With the young guys doing their thing, Jacob Wagisbeck, you don't even really talk about him. There was a few hard hit balls that got outs in this one, but other than those, Jacob Wagisbeck was pretty damn good. He went six innings, gave up three hits, one run, walked two and struck out two, dropping his ERA to, from 5.63 to 4.80. Incredible job to, by Jacob Wagisbeck. Tim Mays went out there, threw a clean inning, got a got, went an inning, no hits, no walks, and a strikeout, and his ERA dropped 10 points to 4.05, and then... Joe Biagini went a clean inning, no hits, no walks, and a strikeout, and then he gets traded, all right, and Justin Schaefer went a clean inning, got the save, threw an inning, no hits, no walks, and a strikeout, dropping his ERA to 2.37 for Justin Schaefer in 19 innings. Keep an eye on this guy moving forward into next year. He might be a big, big piece of this bullpen moving into next season, all right, and offensively, Bo Bichette, he had a day. He had, he had a single there in the later inning as well. He went three for five with an RBI, a home run, and a run scored in this one. Hitting, again, I know it's only three games against Kansas City, but he's hitting 462 with a 500 on base percentage. Bo Bichette's having a great first three games of his career. But again, you got to sustain it, right? You can't have a good first four games and then be terrible the next ten. You just can't do that. you got to contain it over a full schedule, but it's great to see Bo Bichette go out there today and do a job. And it was awesome to see him in the leadoff spot doing it. All right, Kevin Beach won one for three in the ballgame. Scor had it, scored two runs, walked twice as well. Raised batting average a couple points. Got a couple walks because it's Kevin Biggio. That's what he does. All right, Tasker Hernandez with one for three. He came in to pinch hit for uh, Lourdes Gurriel Jr., Went one for three with an RBI, the RBI double that he had early in the game. All right, he's hitting 221 on the year as, Te as Teoscar, and I, I mean, he's doing fantastic. I love what we're seeing from his, uh, him as of late. Smokey with the RBI single and a walk, and uh, Freddie Galvis one for four, Brandon Drury one for four, and Reese McGuire had an infield single. He's one for four on the day today. All right, so that wraps up the three-game set against Kansas City Royals. Now we look forward to the next three for the Blue Jays. All right, game one against Baltimore. Trent Thornton versus Wojciechowski. Wojciechowski. That's a rough one. All right, you guys, let me know in the comments what you what what your thoughts on on those two guys. Isn't that Adrian Wojciechowski guy? Isn't he the guy that had the no-hitter going against the Red Sox, I think? If, if I'm not mistaken, that's what he he was the last guy who did that. And Trent Thornton's going to come off the injured list and pitch there tomorrow. It's funny. Game two and three of this series was supposed to be Aaron Sanchez, obviously not now, with the trade being made, and Ryan Baraki. He's now on the IL. That's not happening. So who the heck's pitching game two and three for the Blue Jays this series coming up? I don't know. What I do know is that uh, Aaron Brooks and Dylan Bundy are the starting pitchers for the Orioles in games two and three of the series. But it is going to be really in interesting to see what this management team does with all these moves being made, what are they going to do pitching-wise for this team for the rest of the season, for that matter? Because you don't have a lot. Other than guys like... Other, I mean, I talked about it in the, in, the, in the trade video. We have Trent Thorne, Jacob Wagisback, Thomas Pannone, Sean Reed Foley, and... Who? And even those four guys haven't pitched past this season! Wagisback just pitched in his Major League debut this, this season... You know, Trent Thorne pitching his Major League debut this season. Uh, J Sean Reed Foley got in a few games last year for the Blue Jays. But other than that, he hasn't pitched much. And Thomas Pannone just got in the big league last year. Talking about young kids. Holy smokes, it's going to be crazy. And bullpen-wise, you traded Biagini, you traded Daniel Hudson, you traded David Phelps. Who's going to replace them? So the Blue Jays have very interesting decisions to make. And obviously with the acquisition of Derek Fisher, where's he going to go? So this is going to be a really interesting next like three or four days for the Blue Jays. It's going to be crazy. It's going to be absolutely crazy to see what happens with this team 
moving forward. But guys, just a heads up. I'm going to let you guys know right now that um, this upcoming weekend, Friday night, Saturday night, and, well, Sunday I'll be back. Um, I'll be at my buddy's cottage, all right? And what that'll mean, I will not be able to do videos for you guys. It'll be the first time since that the, my, my first year of doing videos that I will have to go a few days without doing videos for you guys. Obviously, the cards there's, there's no Wi-Fi up there, so it's 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 gonna be a, it's gonna be a difficult one. I'll be keeping up to date with scores and the minor leaguers and all that stuff, but I will not be able to do videos for you guys and be able to upload them because I don't think it's a good idea to use data and do that. But it uh, I apologize to you guys in advance for that. But on Sunday it'll probably be post game because the Jays will probably play at one o'clock. I'm assuming on Sunday. Yeah, 105 first pitch. I will do a full four-game series wrap-up. That's just what's going to be. It's going to be a big, big video of four games condensed into one. And I have, or no, sorry, three, sorry, because I'll be able to do tomorrow, Thursday night's video. But uh, the three games for Friday, Saturday, Sunday, it'll all be incorporated into one video. I apologize wholeheartedly for that, you guys. But I'm going to do that. That's, just, that's the only really way I can do that. Um, but I'm just giving you guys a heads up now. Tomorrow will be just fine, but it's the, the three games afterwards will be on Sunday. All right. I'll let you know in the, co in the game tomorrow as well, but I'm uh, just giving you guys the heads up right now about that. All right. Quickly going to touch on the minor leagues and Buffalo hasn't played yet. I don't think, let me just go to this real quickly here. Uh, Buffalo, no, they haven't played. They play at seven o'clock tonight. New Hampshire, they played early on. I think they had a noon start there today. And um, Forrest Wall, again, we talked about minor uh, outfielders that are probably ahead of Cal Stevenson in the rankings. Got like Forrest Wall, great example. And Santiago Espinal, usually an infielder, he played center field. The Blue Jays are trying him out as an outfielder. See what see what I mean? This is what's happening. And both guys, left field and center field, went two for four in the ball game. Forrest Wall had an RBI and a walk. Santiago Espinal had two RBIs and a walk, and both went two for four. One, uh, Forrest Wall's hitting 276, whereas Santiago Espinal is hitting 277. Good to see down there. And Kevin Smith goes 0 for 4, 3, 3 Ks, a rough time to end the month of July. But what a month of July it was for Kevin Smith. Now, how is he going to transition it into August? We're going to have to wait and see. It's going to be very exciting, though. And on the mound, Justin Dillon was awesome. Six innings of seven hits, two runs, walk one, and struck out with three. He was really good. Uh, Dunedin, they didn't play good because I'm not going to be able to talk about Cal Stevenson anyways. That sucked. All right, and as for the Lansing Lug Nuts, they won 10-8 in 10 innings. What a game in Lansing it was. I mean, they were up in the ninth. They gave up three runs, they tied, as in uh, the Lake County captains tied it in the bottom of the ninth. But then Lansing scored two in the top half of the tenth to win it 10-8. Crazy game. And Otto Lopez, the young kid. I love it. He went four for five with two RBIs, a walk, and two runs scored. He's hitting 307, is the young fella. Gabriel Moreno went one for two, walked three times, and scored three runs. He's hitting 314. And, and uh, Griffin Cohen went one for four, two RBIs. He walked twice and scored two runs, so I'll give him that. He's hitting 278 on the season there in Lansing. So it's good to see down there for those guys. And um, nothing good pitching wise. Vancouver, they play later on today. Bluefield, they play at 4 o'clock, so they, they've already started. We're not going to get into those guys right now. And as for the Gulf Coast League team, I'm looking at it right now for the first time, so you guys will be you guys will be here for that. All right, how they do? They lost 4-2, okay, but the, the question I have is this. Kendall Williams, I'm assuming, didn't pitch because he pitched a few days ago. How did Desan Brown do if he played? All right, I'm just going to check that out for you guys right now. There he is, Desan Brown. So he went 1-5 for five in the ball game, struck out three times. So he's hitting 250 down there in the Gulf Coast. Like, remember, this kid's 18s, and he wasn't the top top two picks he was i think it was like the third or fourth round pick i think it was the third round pick by the blue jays so again just got to keep an eye moving forward to son brown the young the youngin and uh yeah so nobody on the mound either so guys you know what the trade deadline has now come and gone it has been a crazy crazy day but it's done blue jay fans were through it whatever deals you don't like deal with it no pun intended there but it it, it is what it is it's happened you can't dwell on it you just can't. All right? So, guys, you know what? That is going to do it for this one. If you guys enjoyed this video and you guys enjoyed the ball game there today in Kansas City, smack that like button. I do appreciate that. And if you enjoy getting a little bit of the sweep, this is still so dirty. i got to clean this thing. This is rough. If you enjoyed this, the sweep of the Kansas City Royals, <laughs> hit that like button. I do appreciate that, guys. Hit the subscribe button if you guys are not already. I'm going to poke the damn hole in the roof. Uh, <laughs> Comment down below your guys' thoughts on this game, the video, the trades that were made today. Everything. Go crazy in the comments below, guys. And uh, check out my main man, Mo Buckets, on Twitter, Blue Jays Wave on Instagram. 
Twitter is also down below, guys. Follow up, send me a DM, do all that great stuff. If you guys have anyone, anything you want to talk about when it comes to the trades and the trade deadline for the Blue Jays, go nuts, all right? In my DMs on Twitter, that sounds really stupid, but I said it anyways, all right? <laughs> and... And I'll talk to you guys tomorrow night as the Blue Jays open up their four-game series against the Baltimore Orioles at, um, oh my gosh, Camden Yards. I don't know why I totally forgot what Camden Yards. Uh, Trent Thornton, Adrian Wojcicki on the mound for the Orioles. I don't know how to pronounce the name. I'll probably figure that out tomorrow. 705 first pitch at Camden Yards. Thank you so much for listening and watching. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Talk to you guys then.